Hello, welcome to the Richardson Simple Living. My name's Maria and you're watching our Vlogmas 2023. Now you're gonna to have to excuse if you can hear noise in the background because I've got the washing machine going. I always seem to have it going when I'm doing something in the kitchen, but it might be noisy, it might not, I don't know. But anyway, I thought what I'm going to do today, I'm just making some pastry today actually, and I just thought, oh, I'll bring you along and you can join me. I think today's national days are I can never say this one, poinsettia, the flower. Well, it says the flower, it's actually the leaf that seems to turn the colour. But they're really nice, I do like them, and I did think, oh, shall we go out and have a look at some? But then I thought, well, no, because I might feel I want to buy them, and I cannot look after them whatsoever. I just cannot look after them. I don't know why I've had them years and years, I've tried them, and I just can't look after them. They seem to die, the leaves just drop off and die, no matter what I do to them. I've Googled how to take care of them. Still, no good, I really can't keep them alive. So I thought, well, what's the point in me going out and buying one if I can't keep it alive? I've got lots of artificial ones and I've got some nice ones on the tree and ornaments and that, so that'll do me. <laughs> so if you wanted to buy a poinsettia, today's the day to do it because it's the national day for it. So yeah. Another day it's a national day for is making a gingerbread house. Well, I have got a gingerbread house kit to make, but I'm not going to do it today because I think we've had a bit of an overdose of um, gingerbreads lately. <laughs> we did gingerbread biscuits the other day and then we decorated the gingerbread biscuits. So I thought, oh, we'll leave the house this week and perhaps do it next week, just before Christmas, we'll make that. So. I'm not going to do that today. I thought I've got to get my mince pies done actually for Christmas. Now I'm not going to film me making the mince pies because I'm not going to make the mince pies today. But I will tell you, I'll do them later in the week. I'm not going to film the mince pie making. But what I will do on Friday, when it's air frying Friday, I'm going to try making a mince pie tart, you know, on a plate. And we'll have a go at that in the air fryer. So when I make the mince pies, I have to do them quick, get them cold, and I put them into deep freeze ready for Christmas so uh, nobody can eat them. My mum used to keep them in airtight tins and put them away, but here, if I was to do that, I'd go back to the tin and I'd be lucky if there was any crumbs left. So <laughs> I put them into deep freeze and then just get out so many I want. I bag so many in a bag and just take out the bag for what I want. So I'll be doing that and I do them in the oven. I won't be doing that in the air fryer. And that's because the pie dish is way too big for the air fryer. So yeah, I'll be doing them my traditional way in the oven. And I will have a go at doing a plate tart, mince, mince meat plate tart, mince meat tart. <laughs> I don't know what you'd call it when it's on a plate. But I'm going to have a go at doing one of them because that's something that they can eat here and now and um, then I'll be able to taste test it. But for today, I'm doing the batch bake of pastry bake. I always say batch bake, don't I? It's make. I'm batch making my pastry. So, and then I will do the mince pies further in the week or next week, whichever. So yeah, I just thought I'd bring you along with me and just show, I think I may have shown you me doing pastry before, but I'll just do one lot and show you how I do my pastry. I just do a short crust pastry and bring you down and I do it in my uh, mixer, always do it in my mixer because it's faster, it's a lot quicker for me to do when I'm making a lot of them. If you're just making the one, it wouldn't be so bad, I could perhaps do it in the bowl but because I want to make a lot of them and I don't want to be here all day hand mixing them, then uh, I do it in there. So first of all I'm going to put eight ounces of plain flour in. And we'll have to open a new bag. That one's empty. Let's open another one. Oh, looks like I've opened it before. Right, so we want eight ounces of plain flour. There we go. See, I'll probably use a whole bag of flour more or less when I um, make it because I make about eight balls of it usually so we're going to put that into the processor then I use the stalk baking margarine and um, 
I don't know. That just says stalk. I'm not sure. Bring it down so you can say just the stalk. So what I'm going to do is put two ounces of that in. Sort of replaces lard because I don't do them with lard. And then I'm going to put two of the stalk margarine in. Don't know why I do that. It just seems a really nice pastry and a nice taste. So if I put two and two in, it gets to four ounces. If you just use lard, you just want the four ounces. Or if you just use the butter, you want four or butter and lard, it's two and two. So, yeah. So I'm going to just chop that into there now. Can we see all right? Just put them in. Chop them up smaller that way, then they'll blend a bit better. I'm quite close to the washing machine, so you might hear it spinning. It's noisy when it spins, that is. I don't know if it's because it's on concrete floor. It makes it sound noisier. Right, so I'll put that all around a bit. Just wipe my hands on the cloth. Now that's going to get a bit noisy, that spinner. So, And this is going to get noisy too. So we're going to put that, I'll put it about number 10. And I'm just going to do it round till it starts to make breadcrumbs. Take it away from the edges. It all mixes evenly. Bits there that need mixing. Swipe round, and that should do it. Looking like breadcrumbs. Right, I timed it with the spinning of the machine, so, oh, my am doing that? Let's stop now. So the next thing is then, it's all fine breadcrumbs now in there, so we're going to measure some water. I normally take it to 60, it's got a measurement on here, so I put about 60 of cold water in, I think that's mill, I think. So we're going to just put 60 in. And then I trickle it in slowly. And then it should go into a ball. You can see it going round and round. It start to conglomerate into a ball then. There it goes. Pick up the loose pieces. There we go. Lift that out. Pick up the loose pieces if there are any. There are this time. And there we have it. Dropped a bit off it. One nice ball of pastry. Well, what I'm going to do with that now, I'm going to put a bit of flour on a plate, sit it on a plate and I'm going to leave it to rest. I'm going to do some more because I'm going to batch make them ready for my mince pies like I said. So I'm going to leave it on a plate and it will rest then. 
So when I've done all of them, I shall leave them rest for a while and then pop them into bags into either deep freeze if I'm not going to do them until next week, but if I'm going to do them in the next day or two, I'll pop them into the fridge, which is very cold. So that one can go on a plate. And that's how I do my pastry when I do a lot of it. It's very rare I do it by hand. If I'm only going to do a little bit, I'll do it by hand, but I never really do a little bit. I always do big batches of it because I like to put it into deep freeze and it's just there to grab when you want to do something then. So, um, yeah, that's how I do it. So that's it for today. Nothing really Christmassy except for the fact that the pastry is going for the mince pies. And like I say, on Friday, we will do um, a mince pie tart in the air fryer and then we can taste test out and see what it's like because the mince pies have been done separate. So thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.